Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. I hope you are as excited as I am to be part of this session. I am of Johannesburg. I am currently studying for a diploma in business information technology. I serve as a student ambassador for Angel Hack. Um, earlier this year, I was promoted to be a Z ambassador captain at IBM. What I do is help companies to build tech communities in South Africa. As part of my tech advocacy, I have established a tech club at my university. I hope to see some of my friends join in. Um, we have realized that we have an information silo concerning careers in IT that students can follow. Um, in my country, for instance, we have quite a large number of unemployed graduates who um, I assume that it's because they couldn't gain a competitive advantage over others during their school days. So for today, we have invited our guest speaker from Amazon to be presenting the certifications that Amazon offers. Uh, we believe that those certificates can help students to get internships and jobs in tech companies upon graduation. Our guest speaker is Veli Swaboya from Amazon. She's a senior developer advocate at Amazon, working especially with, but not limited to, developers in the Sub-Saharan Africa region. Formerly an AWS community hero, first woman out of Africa to be named an AWS hero. Her, her tech background includes software developer, business and systems analysis, solutions architecture, and cloud engineering. Um, you can connect with her on social media. I guess she'll give us those details as soon as she starts presenting. Very so over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Tiso, for that great um, introduction. And thank you, Angel Hack, for hosting me today. Um, and thank you, everyone who's joining. Thank you for signing up and for making the time to join. Um, so I'm going to put up a slide very quickly where I'm doing a brief introduction of who I am and then I'll share those social media uh, details that uh, Tiso was talking about but I'll share those at the end as well and then we'll do a very quick overview of this certification that we are here to discuss today and then I'll take that uh, PowerPoint down and then I'll put up a browser um, and this shows us our training and certification page on AWS and, that, and we're going to step through that because there is a lot of information there and that's what we're actually going to step through today and then I'll end up by showing you other resources outside of just AWS that you can actually consult and they will help you prepare for the certification when you actually decide to go and do that uh, uh, later on. Before I start, I was just chatting to Tiso now before I started that I'm Currently in Seattle this week and it's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> I'm drinking a lot of hot water just to get my voice going, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm really honored by the invite. So let me share my screen and then we can get started. So that's me. I'm Velusa Boya. I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS. I am based in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I work for AWS and I look after the AWS developer community of Sub-Sahara Africa. I was an AWS community hero and I always hear about this, what is it, what it is all about. And I would say I would need to come back for another session to talk through this because uh, there's a lot of detail around it. But what I always like to say is that we are always on the lookout for new heroes, especially out of Africa, because we don't have a lot right now. We have only four heroes. Um, you can be different kinds of heroes. I was a community hero. You get uh, heroes along the specialties like serverless, like containers, um, IoT. We have those uh, segments as well. Uh, but it would be great to get more, especially out of Africa. So, yeah. We can chat about that some other time. I am, um, that's me on Twitter. You can find me. I'm on LinkedIn and there's a Slack channel where you can find us, but it tends to not be very active. But if you're in there, it's fine. Uh, but you can find me on LinkedIn and I've got a group on LinkedIn specifically for uh, people from sub-Saharan Africa, but you can join in even if you're not. And I tend to share AWS-related information, especially what's actually uh, 
relevant to you if you are in sub-Saharan Africa. So I'll share if there are job opportunities, like say Amazon is hiring uh, in South Africa or Nigeria or wherever, I will tend to share those there. If we're running certification campaigns where we're giving out exam vouchers only to sub-Saharan Africa, I will share those there. So that's what I use that LinkedIn group for. And we have a thing called user groups. Uh, these user groups are not owned by AWS. They are owned by members of the community. Much like uh, I would say, like very similar to what TSO is doing. So someone who's a part of the community decides they want to bring people together who like to talk about AWS. And these are enthusiasts. So those are user groups, but we tend to support them because they talk about all things AWS. Currently, we've got um, one in Cape Town, although it's dormant right now. We have in Pretoria, Johannesburg, we have in Nigeria, we have in Kenya, we have in Ghana, Cameroon, and we have in Benin. And there might be more uh, uh, coming up, one or two coming up here in Africa this year, but not confirmed yet. So we're going to talk about this certification. Uh, the AWS Certified Developer Associate. What is it and who is it for? We have uh, um, categories for certifications at AWS. You have the foundation level. That's right at the beginning. So the certification that you have in there is a certified cloud practitioner. It's foundational. What it does is just it just introduces you to all things AWS, all things AWS cloud. It's entry level, and it tends to be recommended to those who are not technical. Say your manager, they want to understand a little bit more about AWS. That would normally be the set that they would go for. Or someone in finance, HR, they want to understand the concepts. That's what they would go for. And then the next tier is the um, associate tier. There you have this certification that we're discussing today, the Certified Developer Associate, the Certified Solutions Architect Associate, and the Certified SysOps Admin Associate. This is a fun level. I really enjoyed preparing for the sets at this level, all three of them. Um, the Certified Developer Associate is targeted at people who are, or are already building applications, web applications, and now you want to learn how to build those in the cloud, in the AWS cloud. Um, what you can become potentially after you have the certification as a cloud engineer or even a DevOps engineer, because you get introduced to CI, CD concepts as well. You will learn about containers on AWS. You learn about serverless applications on AWS, places to host, uh, just everything that a developer would typically need to know um, uh, on AWS. And um, to write the certification, it costs, uh, it will cost you 100, 150 US dollars to schedule the certification and, and, and write. And typically the exam is uh, 130 minutes long. You get to answer 65 questions. The set is valid for three years. Trust me, those three years fly by. I think actually my this certified developer associate it actually expires this year in june and i can still remember when i wrote it and i think oh i have to certify it all over again um uh, but valid for three years and then you can just go and recertify with the recertification you will get a window where you must go recertify within that window if you miss that window then it's a certification uh from scratch and um a pass score is for you to pass is usually around plus minus 72 percent but this can change it fluctuates uh there's like a, a bell curve it depends on the day how many people wrote the exact same certification that you wrote and then that's how they will actually uh decide and uh, move the pass go up and down depending on the people who wrote so that is just the introduction on uh on this certification and um after the associate level you have the professional level and on there you have the solutions architect professional and you've got the devops engineer professional and this one the devops engineer i still want to go and do this because um they say if you have passed this the developer associate it really starts to introduce you to the material that you need in order to prepare for the devops engineer so sometimes people will pass this one 
use this as a stepping stone and maybe sometimes combine it with the sysops admin as a stepping stone to that DevOps engineer. And I think uh, that's, that's a cool uh, set to have as well. That's the professional now. And then we have the specialties. The specialties would be your security, your machine learning, your, um, your data analytics, um, and a couple of other specialty kind of certifications. There used to be a long time ago that in order for you to first go and write the professional, you have to have at least one of the associates, but that recommendation is not on there anymore. Also, in order for you to write this uh, developer associate, you don't have to have the foundational cloud practitioner. So if you're already technical, um, I know this can be controversial. I always say if you're already technical, you could um, do the cloud practitioner just to get yourself introduced to concepts of AWS cloud you wouldn't even need to write that certification. And then you can go on to this associate level and then you can start spending your money. But it's up to you how you want to approach it. Uh, your employer, if you are technical, is not going to be impressed because you have a cloud practitioner certification, um, especially if you're in a technical role. If you're in a non-technical role, sure, bring that CCP. But if you're technical, I would advise you start spending your money at the associate level going up. And that's the introduction. I'm now going to take this down and I'm going to share the browser that we're actually going to start to, to step through. Okay. Um, so how do you approach learning on AWS? And when you are starting out, this can be very overwhelming because uh, there's a lot of information and people don't know where to actually start with everything. We have on the training page um, a guide that we have, and this actually helps you know how to approach your learning. So if you come to uh, amazon.com, AWS amazon.com slash training, uh, you will see the very first uh, splash page has this, learning by role or solution. Learning by role is what we're actually going to discuss today because ultimately you want to be a developer on AWS or you could learn by solution. Learning by solution is like what I just mentioned. Let's say you were doing the data analytics certification. So you would do a lot of uh, content that's along this data analytics tab or databases or game tech, machine learning. This is learning by solution. But today we're going to look at learning by role. Um, and uh, here it's about building cloud skills that help you advance your career. You can learn along the architect uh, career path, the cloud practitioner, if you try starting out, the developer, the DevOps engineer, the machine learning or operations. So operations that would show you things like how to do learn for the sysops admin, machine learning, DevOps engineer will probably show you um, a combination of this developer, sysops admin, and then preparing you for the DevOps engineer. Cloud practitioner, if you're starting out. Architect, that's my personal one because my, my background is as a solutions architect. So today we're going to do the developer and that's what we're actually going to dive deep into. Also on this page, you will see there are tabs around how to get trained, um, the different types of training that you offer on AWS. There's training by topic. You can find training by topic. There used to be class, cl classroom training before uh, the pandemic happened. So you could find classroom training as well. And we have a ton of digital training and there are training events as well. And uh, we've got trading partners that you can also just check out. And, and this uh, kind of helps you see where to actually go or what resources to, to consult as you prepare for your certification. And training partners are so great in that they actually structure the learning for you because you could come and find there's a ton of information on AWS. But what's so great when you do a course is uh, they structure it for you. And then there's uh, exercises. So as you go along, you get to work out whether you are ready or you're not. And then we have a tab along 
getting certified. Then here you have your overview of the certification, the entire certification, and then you'll check out the different certification exams that you have. And on here, you can schedule an exam. We'll have some resources to help you prepare for an exam. And this is a new one that I'm seeing. Uh, the last time I certified, this was not here, where you can buy an, an exam voucher. What's so great with this is that um, what used to happen before, when you go to schedule your, your training in there, you would uh, then input that will be the first time that you're inputting your credit card details to book your training. Now you could buy an exam voucher, which you can then use later. And what's nice about this is that your employer could buy exam vouchers and give to you. Or maybe your friend or whoever can sponsor you an exam voucher, give that to you. And then when you go to share, your, you can just use that. And this develop your team would be for employers and a couple of training partners that we have that I mentioned before. And then programs that we have on AWS that can support your certification or your learning journey. We have an AWS Academy, Educate, Restart. I see Restart has really been um, expanding a lot, especially here in Africa, I've been seeing. Restart is a program that helps people who are not employed or are underemployed. So underemployed, you want to move into an IT career, They, you can then uh, through Restart learn AWS Cloud. And I know part of the program, it depends on the training partners. Some of them include helping you find a job afterwards. So this is a great one. When you finish Restart at the end, you will have a voucher to write the Cloud Practitioner certification. But that's the only voucher you're going to get with the other certifications after that you kind of like uh, on your own and then our uh, skills center. So we have, we are here learning by role, which is a developer. And now we're going to go and dive deep into that. Uh, you can still see this new tab that I've just, it's now changed to developer. You can still see that, right? Right, Tiso? Great. Okay. Okay. So I did say in the beginning, who would go and do the developer certification? This is someone who is looking for a starting point and they want to know how to learn or where to start because they ultimately want to learn how to build AWS cloud applications. And uh, what's so great about using this splash page, that's why I like to use this guide, this learn, um, this entire uh, guide under training. It's because they are also developer learning plans. Um, so the learning plans, they um, they show you all the stuff that you did to be learning with a link to resources as you prepare for your developer associate certification. Uh, so you could either follow this learning plan or if you have a, um, a training partner, I know the, 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 the ones that people tend to use, your a cloud guru, your exam pro, you could use those and they would be the alternative to this developer learning plan that we have. This developer learning plan has been prepared by AWS training and certification to provide you with resources, but nothing stopping you from consulting other training vendors as well, the, the more well-known ones out there. Or you could combine the two depending on, on, on how much you are looking to prepare. How long to prepare? Typically, it'll take you about a month and a half to prepare for a developer associate to where you get to say, I'm prepared, I'm ready, I can now go and write my exam. So that's around about the time that you will need if you are focusing and spending the time. And people used to ask me um, a while back, like, how much time do I need? How much time do I dedicate? When I was, I can only speak from my personal experience, when I was learning um, for this, uh, no, that was when I was learning for the solutions architect, but you would need one about the same time. I used to spend about two hours a day, Monday to Friday, going through the material. And then uh, on a weekend, I'd spend a little bit more time. And I did that for four weeks. And at the end of the four weeks, I actually, I remember the Friday of week four, I, I wrote the exam. And um, so that's typically how much time you will need. And yes, while we're still talking about that, another good advice, once you start your learning process towards a certification, book your exam immediately. 
And because what's so great about that, it it helps you focus because it can be very easy to get sidetracked. Uh, it's always a, t a good tip to book your exam already. Then you know you've got that date there waiting for you. Then if you're not ready, you can always change the date, move it out, but have it there so that it's there to just motivate you. So the, the, the developer learning plan is um, it, it's, a, it's a group of on-demand courses that we have that will help you grow your technical skills as you learn about um, uh, cloud developer and serverless fundamentals, containers, CI/CD on AWS. All of this helps you prepare for the uh, certification exam. And um, now I've already clicked what that uh, learning plan looks like, and we're going to go and look at that. And uh, so if you if you scroll down on this page, you will see the different types of learning that we have digital right now is what you will see. Things like getting started with .NET on AWS, that would be part of that learning plan, the things that we would need to learn. Introduction to serverless development, and then we've got an exam readiness. Uh, my other advice is to not go and write an exam without doing the readiness um, um, uh, resource first. What that readiness actually does for you is um, it doesn't, um, it helps you, it shows you how to read a question when you are writing an exam. And uh, that's another thing when you're writing AWS exam is all about how do you read that question before you go and answer. You typically will have about three minutes per question and People sometimes can tend to rush to answer. And meanwhile, the the best answer was not the one that you chose. But had you spent a little bit more time, you would have actually arrived at the right question and, and chosen that and then you pass. And that can be the difference between you passing. It's not even that you don't know the material. It's that you did not read the question right, uh, correctly. And that's what that exam readiness helps you with. And I found that to be so invaluable when I was preparing. And also there are um, uh, practice exams that you can have sometimes on AWS will give out free training exam, practice exam, but not always. Uh, but these training vendors that I talk about, they tend to sell uh, uh, prep exams. Which, which are great, practice exams, which are great. You must always also do those before you actually go and write an exam. And now let's, let's dive deep onto this learning plan. So you can enroll uh, for free for this learning plan and uh, it will typically take you around 17 hours to work through all of it. And when you actually do training with an outside vendor, like the ones that I mentioned, it also typically takes you around about the same time to do. So you just choose what's more what's more um, um, comfortable for you. This is free. Some of the training vendors could be free, but some you actually have to pay for. Um, so this is the structure of what you would see. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk, um, what this is, what, it, what, what, what Elastic Beanstalk is on AWS is one of those core uh, services for a developer that is hosting applications on AWS. Um, Elastic Beanstalk is a service that lets you quickly deploy your applications in the cloud. Um, so this, you do this introduction, it will just introduce you to the different components of Elastic Beanstalk and uh, it will, then you'll get a demo as well of the service on how to do the deployment only. And there's a couple of others that you can have um, getting started with .NET on AWS, and um, I'm not going to drill through all of them, but this just gives you an idea of the, the, the resources and the, and the content that you're going to get with this learning, um, with this developer learning plan. Um, so you, you can browse through it here or you can um, click on this other tab. And then if you click, it's going to show you a PDF and the PDF essentially is very similar to what we're looking at already. Um, um, there's just a ramp up guide, all the other resources and the things that you would need to learn so that you are prepared for the exam. And um, um, tutorials, we've got blog posts for you to read, classroom training where it's still available, web pages for you to go and read, and our podcasts that we have available on AWS that you can listen to 
white papers to read. I've never written any of the exam where I didn't read or be recommended to read the white papers first. And it is really critical that you read the recommended white papers and guides before you go and write. And all the documentation on AWS, the frequently asked questions that you want to go and read through, hands-on tutorials, uh, solutions, uh, libraries, YouTube channels for you to go and watch. Again, when you use, I, I did all my training through A Cloud Guru. When you do a training through that kind of a partner, they will point you to exactly the same things that we are stepping through here. And um, then uh, I've got this other tab. This other tab is from, um, so when we looked at the, at, the, at the developer, when we looked at the skills builder, one of the links was uh, tools to build on AWS. And here, we're just stepping through all of those. What we have on AWS is a couple of SDKs. SDKs help you as a developer uh, write applications that interact with AWS services quickly. And we have SDKs for uh, various languages, Go, Java, JavaScript. So um, here you will just see the SDKs that you um, are learning how to build applications. Say you are a Go developer. So you will find training specifically for Go specific APIs and helpful libraries and how to build on AWS with an IDE. And you'll also get links to different communities that you can start becoming um, a part of as you are doing your learning and throughout your AWS journey, because it's always great. It helps to be part of a community, uh, AWS on GitHub, communities that are there, Stack Overflow, Reddit, communities that are there that you can start uh, becoming a part of, and it helps you. And um, I talked about restart training before and how it's, it, it's, it's a great place for those uh, that are unemployed or underemployed. And the other reason that, uh, usually, if you if you are employed, it's not the right avenue for you. It's because restart tends to be a full time nine to five every day for twelve weeks. So if you have a job, definitely there's no way you will be able to be a part of it. But then again, like I said, what you get at the end is an exam voucher for a cloud practitioner, which you are not. You are doing the developer certificate, so it's not really the the the, the best one for you. And then I talked about uh, different partners of AWS that you can actually use if you are not using our resources that we have here, or if you want to use over and above those. I like to recommend this 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 trainer, um, Andrew Brown, is an AWS hero as well. I actually met him; we became heroes at the same time. What's great with Andrew is that he provides all these resources for free. So you can, on his YouTube channel, access material on how to, uh, um, material that helps you prepare for the different types of certifications. And I've seen a lot of uh, people on, 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 on social media will come back and say, uh, the, the, the training they got from him really helped them pass, and he does it for free. Because with some of the trainers, you have to pay to be on the platform to do the, the, the training for the certification. So it's great. And then he can, um, um, there's different types of training that you can find. And the YouTube channel is Exam Pro, but I'm going to share all these links in the chat afterwards. And then that can also help you. And outside of that, I am going to stop now and see if there are any questions. I will share all these links in the chat so that you can go and check them out. And really, that is where you need to start as you prepare for a certification. So you either follow the learning path that we have for you, uh, prepared by training and certification at AWS, or you can consult our training partners, or you can combine both, depending if you want different kinds of uh, perspectives as you prepare for your AWS exam. So I'm going to stop now so that we can start drilling through uh, questions, and then we can look at whatever is relevant to the people who are um, in the chat. I'm just scrolling through to see what's here. While I wait for your questions, I'm going to start sharing the, the links in the chat that you can actually consult. 
best place to start, no matter what certification or the one that we're discussing today, the developer associate or whatever certification you want to follow, um, that's the place, best place to start because this then gives you that guide on um, by role, let's say. You want to be an architect, you want to be a developer on AWS, you want to be DevOps engineer, it will have you that entire learning path or you want to learn per, per solution, databases, machine learning, uh, sysops admin, and uh, it will give you a guide on how to approach that. Um, and then you start there. And I talked about the different training partners that you can actually consult. I'm going to share Andrew's YouTube channel. And Andrew refuses to charge people for, for training. So that, that that's what's so great. So his channel just makes training available for people for free. And um, you can also follow him on, on social media. I think, let me just type his name here. And he, he, he always has a lot to say on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Um, and then uh, let me share my, my um, I'm going to share that LinkedIn group that I talked about um, earlier that you can start joining that and you will just see the information that I, that, that I share that's specific to, um, to, to AWS, uh, but more AWS in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's the LinkedIn group. You can request uh, to, 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 to join this group and um, I'll accept you onto the group. And let me share my LinkedIn. And then I will share my Twitter. Although um, most information I actually really share on 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 LinkedIn, um, I find it to be more structured for me, and um, that's where I will share most of the information. And um, at this point, yeah, I will ask if if there are any questions. Is there anything that I talked about that's not clear, or you would like me to just repeat? You can just. You can just say. Okay, thank you for the great presentation, Beliswa. Um, on the rules that you mentioned, when you say you can choose uh, a certification by the role, as well that you have an architect, you have um, DevOps engineer and developers. So, which one requires uh, one to be a great programmer, and which one requires one to be more of a business analyst or a solution architect? Okay, um, so business analysts, non-technical people would typically do the um, cloud practitioner. And then if they feel they want to approach more, they can do that. When I did, so um, I, was, I was a developer a long time ago and then I did other things. And uh, mm -hmm. when I did the solutions architect certification, I was not writing code anymore. And I was able to prepare for that exam and go write it. Uh, I never needed to know how to write code. I was fine. Um, uh, so you don't need to be a developer to do that. The, the developer uh, associate, you, you do as in we write um, cloud for me. There's um, like infrastructure as code templates. So you need to know a bit of YAML or, or JSON. But you can do this set not knowing those before, and you will learn them, especially when you're using these training partners, you will learn them along the way. And by the time you actually go to write the exam, you already like, oh, okay, I can figure out, I can read a JSON, I can read a, a YAML. Um, uh, um, so um, you don't need to be a hardcore developer, but you're doing this certification because you already are a developer. So you wanna know how as a developer, can I build my applications on AWS? So when I mentioned before that you will learn about serverless on AWS, about uh, containers on AWS, serverless containers, these are mechanisms that help you host your code or your application on AWS. So you already know how to write the code and now you wanna know how to host it on AWS. So you will learn about those services that help you do that. Serverless tends to be used a lot. Uh, we've got a service called Lambda, and uh, it tends to be used a lot for back-end. So if you're a back-end developer, 
you would be using lambda quite a lot. Uh, that is where you, uh, um, lambda, all it does, what it helps you do is that all you do is bring your code. It provisions the infrastructure for you. It manages the infrastructure for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. It does the scaling for you in case your application, um, uh, it, it, you're getting a lot of users on your application. It takes care of all of that for you automatically. So developers love serverless applications because of that. Um, you, can, you will also, as you are preparing for this exam, you will learn about AWS Amplify. Amplify helps you, is a service that exists for you to host your web applications on AWS or your mobile applications on AWS. So Amplify now introduces you to the front end side of an application as well. You can host both the back end and the front end of your application on AWS Amplify, or you can host your back end on, on AWS um, Lambda. So you learn about those services. You already are a developer. You already are writing code and you want to know how. If you don't write code, I would suggest if you if you're not a developer, I would suggest to go for the solutions architect or the sysops admin. Sysops admin is such a fun, fun, fun exam. And the three of them are actually very similar. It's just very little nuances, but they're very similar. You would see if you did all three of them. People normally start with the architect and they do that because it gives you that end to end view, but there's no hard and fast rule. The people who've just gone and done a developer and they're fine. People who just go and do a sysops admin and they're fine. Uh, but yeah, if you're not a developer, I would, I would suggest either architect or sysops admin. Okay. Um, I see we have uh, more questions from the chat. I see Hussein Zenzi. Um, he says, may I get started on AWS practitioner, I think maybe he meant or she meant that how can they get started um, working on the AWS practitioner certificate? Okay. And uh, so I guess we'll, we'll go back onto that uh, guide that I talked about. So learning by role. So we were today talking about learning by the developer role. So if you want to do cloud practitioner, you can start as well. And uh, with a cloud practitioner, you actually don't even need to go and use this training partners because this is the one where we actually have a lot of content for you that you can access here and then you can go and write. See, we've got that um, cloud practitioner essentials well architected, learning about um, how to um, write or build well architected solutions on AWS. Well architected means that you have considered cost, you've considered security, you've considered reliability. So well architected helps you check your applications against those pillars. And um, you will also get an introduction to AWS billing and cost man management. And it's exactly because this Cloud practitioner tends to be for people who are not technical, maybe someone from finance, someone from HR, and uh, that's why it has those uh, courses within it. But yes, you can start. So coming back to that that link that I shared, uh, the, the Learn About link, you can start there, Hussein, and then click on the Cloud Practitioner uh, uh, role, and then it will take you through all these um, resources that you need to prepare for that. Um, and then we have another question from Noma Swazingosi. Um, she's asking, I have a science degree. I would like to go into DevOps. Are AWS certifications enough or do I need to do a computer science degree and the certification to be able to get into the DevOps job or who you could say? You don't need uh, a com site at all. You can do the certifications. And another thing that I'm, 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 I, I like to start highlighting, you can do the certification, but it is really important that you stay hands-on. When I started my, my certification journey, I would learn for a certification and then I go right and I pass and I never touch AWS again. And this is going to get you when you go and interview for jobs because the questions they're going to ask you are so practical that if you have not been hands-on after that, 
you are not going to be able to answer the questions at the interview and you're not going to pass the interview and you're going to be so disappointed because you did all the certification and here you are, you're not getting a job. So yes, certification, but making sure to stay hands-on. How you stay hands-on is AWS account, build solutions there, use the tutorials that we have available. We have workshops. I'm going to share a workshops link as well that we have on AWS that... Um, 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 we have various workshops there by different topics. And if you carry on doing these, it helps you remain practical on AWS. So when you go and they interview you, you can actually answer the questions because you've been hands-on. It's not just a theory that you were reading somewhere. But yes, to answer the question, Swazi, certification is enough. You don't need to go into ComSci. But make sure to stay hands-on as well. Thank you. IDT also asks, um, they say, I'm a second year computer engineering student, so which domain is suitable for me or would rather be more beneficial to them? It depends on what you want to go. Again, that learning path that I showed, you're going to go there and uh, actually check all the different roles there, the architect role. It depends on what you want to go into. And um, do you want to be an architect? then you follow that, that path. Do you want to go into DevOps? Then you follow that path. Do you want to learn machine learning? Then you follow that path. So it depends on what actually interests you. And then Hussein Zenzi goes again and say, cloud computing in Africa is still developing. What are the challenges on the job market? Challenges that I've seen on the job market is um, now some of it I'm going to base on personal experience is um, as much as there's still so much scope to get jobs because most companies are still starting out with AWS, so they're still hiring, the competition is also still there. Because what happened a lot during um, the pandemic, people just studied AWS, they got certifications, and those people now are ripping the benefits, they're getting those job opportunities. So it's become more competitive. And that's why, again, it is really important for you to stay hands-on, build solutions, become part of those communities. Because what be being part of communities does for you is it keeps your learning, but it also is a network. So you get to hear where there are, are job roles and um, it's become competitive. I would say that is the challenge. And um, it's when I, my first role as a cloud engineer was in 2018, 19, I was looking, I still had a lot of options and also employers were just starting out with their AWS journey so they went as um, as particular as I feel that they have become now because they have more options of people in the market now so when I was looking for a job in 2017-18 you had a certification you passed the interview you got the job but now they're going to want a lot more from you what have you done what's your experience in all of those things make sure to stay hands-on interact with people, network. And I mean, I'm in this role today because of networking. Do that. It's become more competitive. That's my answer. So um, the previous year we saw that uh, Amazon was offering free vouchers for to complete the certification exams. So can we expect the same thing this year? Um, it's always hard to say. Um, um, part of it is driven, us making those exam vouchers available is partly driven by the feedback that we get. Like now you're asking the question. So we have more people ask the question and then we start putting things together. I actually bumped into the people who, who actually did that campaign last year and I asked them, but they're still collecting the data that will support them doing it or not doing it. So right now I can't say whether you can expect to, to get them or not, uh, but do keep a, an eye out. And that's why, again, that LinkedIn group, if we have any, that would be the place where I would post. Some of the things I don't even post on my normal LinkedIn page, uh, but I will post there, uh, especially things like vouchers because they're just helping. Help. 
let's say the the campaign is targeting just africa i won't share it on my normal page because mm -hmm. uh, i have everyone there but you feel that group i will most definitely share there and yeah but yeah to answer your question right now i mm -hmm. can't say but let's see what happens in the year assist reader just uh just responded um yeah um Trida, you are all the way in australia i think and it's always so great to mm -hmm. To see you on the on the platforms, <laughs> hi, and uh, you've done workshops with us. Uh, so what Trida is saying, the just becoming part of community groups, he really can vouch for it because that's exactly what he's done. I agree. So um, this Amazon also offer summer or winter internships where students can learn more about their technology, maybe in a being inspired by the professionals in a one-on-one -on -one setting so we have um we do have um internships but from what i've seen they tend to be um they tend to be based in the in, in europe in the in the and in, in us the ones that i've seen so far uh and 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 we do have remote roles so there are roles that you could be based wherever you are and you still work for us remotely but internships tend to not be because like you say you need to be close to whoever you're going to be inspired by we also have yes. uh we do have mentorship programs on aws if i don't find that link because that's another thing that would be great to have a mentor um, if I don't find that link now, I will share it with you, Tiso, and then you can just share with everyone later on. But we've got mentorship um, opportunities as well. We have, for, for the ladies in the group, there is um, a, a program on AWS called AWS She Builds. And under this program, we tend to run uh, workshops, um, speaking uh, uh, um, sessions uh, that go towards motivating more women to be involved in in the cloud so we have a couple of programs that we have on the go that's awesome um, uh, mm -hmm. i see a question there mm -hmm. yes Tiso. i was gonna ask the question but you can go ahead the startup question yes I see there's a question there um so you can learn aws and now you know AWS, you can write your own applications uh, and um, your, um, your own products that you can put out there to your, to your customer. And that can lead to you having a startup. And we have programs that support startups on AWS. Now those, I'm gonna, that link I'm going to go and look up for you and share because I actually give a lot of talks to... Um, To, uh, to start up innovation hubs and um, and uh, it's usually potential startup founders that are there and they come to listen to the talks and um, there's AWS for startups and if you follow this link you will get to know about resources that we have on AWS that supports startups AWS Activate, which is a program under startups that gives you free credits, gives you support, technical expertise as you start your startup. You, so you will have a solution architect assigned to you as a startup as you start out building your startup. So we like we like um, a VC in a way for, for startups as well through that program. I've just shared now the, the startups and you can read up more about What's on offer? If you're a startup, you're building a startup on AWS. You can read up more about that. And I talked about the restart program. I'm going, still going to share it. For those who want to do the cloud practitioner, you can go and maybe see in the area where you are if there is a, a, a restart school. When you go to that restart page, scroll down and then you'll see the countries where restart exists and then you can click to the relevant one and then just see where the school is in your area that's giving out restart and maybe you can follow them or inquire from them when next they have a take a take in of students and if that's where you want to go you can uh, consider to join that 
Um, I've seen so many good stories come out of it. I saw someone in Kenya. She did restart last year. And she's just, mm -hmm. she posted this week, she started um, at Safaricom, which is a big mobile provider in, in Kenya, as an intern. So it starts to open up opportunities for people. So um, with the restart program, I have a friend who's, uh, who has like a goal of helping people in uh, Alexandra Township learn how to code. Um, can Amazon help her with um, resources to provide for those people? Or is there any kind of support that you provide to those kind of people? So they could become uh, a restart partner. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's guaranteed you just always get to be one, but there's a process you could go through to become a partner. And I think there is some approval there. And then, um, and then they could either accept to be on or be accepted and then they could become if you're a, if you're a restart partner of aws we support you with resources um uh, it's like the exam vasha that will give to your students at the end you'll get that from aws and then i think there's a stipend for the your, your teachers because now you're going to need a, someone to teach the people they will help you with that and a couple of other resources and i think also with the job placement at the end we leverage customers of aws that we have and um, negotiate for you to be able to place your students there as well. So there is support. Um, if the person wants to take that conversation further, you can just introduce me to them and I will introduce them to the restart people here at AWS. Um, see if we can get them a meeting where they can discuss because I don't know all the details around it. Someone else takes care of that program, but I can introduce them to that person. Okay, I'll definitely share their contacts with you. Okay. Um, I see Joseph has raised their hand. Hi, Joseph. Hello. How are you today? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. It's a pleasure being here with you. Hi. <laughs> Finally seeing your face live. <laughs> it's such a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yeah. Joseph. I'm good. Okay, so um, sorry I joined the meeting a bit late. But um, I came in at a point when um, you are talking about a program I'm actually a graduate of. I am actually a graduate of um, the AWS Research Program. Okay. Okay, and um, I've taken and passed my um, AWS Cloud um, Practitioner exams, which I did in December. Okay. So, um, I have a background in mechanical engineering. So, I am more of um, a person who would like um, to build the data side of things. So, basically, for me, in software or um, cloud um, engineering, I see myself more of a back-end engineer or a data engineer kind of person. Mm -hmm. But... Um, finding a big a starting role like an entry level internship role have been a difficult one since we finished the program in December. Mm. So I was looking at is there a way you can help us get even if it's an unpaid internship so that we can use these skills we've acquired to be, start doing things with them because um. What you don't practice, you forget. Yeah, yeah. So I, that is the one thing where I actually am not able to help. I don't have access to employment opportunities. Um, my role as a developer advocate is to empower you so that you can get that employment. So I don't connect you to employers as well. But what I can say, because you are saying unpaid internships. So then why don't you build your own solutions like we were talking about before, doing those workshops, build those, publish uh, what you have, have it on GitHub, write posts about it. That is like an internship because when you go for an interview one day and this is what have you, what have you built on AWS, you can pull up all of those projects, all of those side projects that you did and you can show those. Um, how, when I started to learn AWS, I used to blog about what I was learning. And those blogs came up when I was interviewing for, for jobs. When um, this was a this role was a third time that I was um, 
interviewing at AWS. I tried for solution architect roles before, but my one of the interviews I did for a solution architect, they actually had read my blogs before I even got to the interview. Have your work be publicly accessible and viewable because that's what's going to speak for you. So if you can't find an internship, keep doing things hands-on. Do you have an AWS account, Joseph? Okay. I, 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 that, that's okay. Do you I have an have... AWS account? Yes, I have an AWS account. Okay. So yes, uh, yes, yes, yesterday I tried my hands on the serverless node crowd application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, aside that, I took I was learning back in the web development. So I built a resume building app, a, an app where you just come in, fill a form, it populates the resume for you, which you can download as a PDF. So I've not hosted it yet, but it's working perfectly on my local machine. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds keep good. publishing your work and, and, and keep networking like you're doing and you never know where it's going to go. And, and this is the other thing that we always talk about is that gone are the days where, I mean, I also come from the same background where someone else, like your manager or whoever, used to give you guidance on where to take, to take your career. What's so great with the cloud skills is that you own that. And, and, and that's why I always say you build things, you talk to people. Make sure that they know about your work out there and you never know where that's going to take you. My very first AWS interview was because they saw me talk about AWS on LinkedIn and they reached out to me on DMs and I went to interview. Fine, I didn't pass the interview because I was not hands-on, um, but that's how they knew that I exist. Be out there, talk about the things that you're learning. As you're learning, you don't have to be perfect before you start talking. As you're learning, you talk about this, the things. I see there's a, thank you, Joseph. I see there's another question. Jay. I see we're going to be out of time soon. Maybe let's just get to the last question, Tiso. Yes. Um, I don't know which one to choose between um, Hussein's question and the one in the Q&A. Um, I'll start with the Hussein's question because it was asked first. It says, what skills must have in order to enroll the AWS developer? Means in related to a beginner program. I mean, what he means is which certification you can start with if you're still a beginner in programming. Okay, you could be a beginner in programming and learn AWS. So you're a beginner in programming and a beginner on AWS. Um, so you could be a beginner in programming and learn because what what you are learning when you are learning AWS is how to host those applications that you're already building, whether you're a beginner or not, how to host them on AWS. Mm -hmm. So you could learn, um, so you could go for the developer certification. You could go for the certified cloud practitioner. But um, like I, I keep saying, if you're technical, if you're in a technical role, you're not going to impress anybody by coming up with a cloud practitioner certification to ask for a job so if you're a developer and you get ccp certified and they advertise for cloud engineers and you come with a ccp set it's it's, it's not they see that as being a, a set for non-technical people so if you want to start be taking seriously you do the associate level certifications um if you're technical and yeah mm -hmm. And also, and Amin Masatin is asking that being a first year computer engineering student in India, how can they boost their career through workshops? Yeah, so we have the link that I shared is self, you, 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 you're doing the workshops on your own. And sometimes on AWS, we will advertise, uh, we will have one of us developer advocates hosting a workshop. So that could be another avenue for you to, 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 to attend workshops. I know um, um, we've had a few on this call who uh, have joined those workshops. And what's great about that is it's a place to network as well because there'd be a lot of you attending. There's the AWS uh, developer advocate is there. You can ask your questions and, and get um, answers in real time. So you can have a mix of workshops yourself paste ones or the ones that we are hosting as AWS developer advocates, you can join those. Uh, the link is already in the chat on the workshops.aws where you can find those self-paced workshops. 
Um, unfortunately, we have reached the end of our session. Um, thank you a lot, Felix, for coming through. Um, you woke up in the wee hours of the morning in Seattle. Um, we thank you for guiding us on the journey of being AWS developers and also about, uh, starting our careers at Amazon or through Amazon certifications. And also I'd like to thank the people of AngelHack for helping us with making sure that this event is a success. Um, special thanks goes to you, Veliswa, Harish Kotra, and Yigo um, Marulini, who's our fellow student ambassador for helping me um, set up this event. I hope to see you again soon. Probably we can do everything like that. Maybe in person. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for hosting me, Angel Hack. Thank you, Tiso, and everyone mm -hmm. for attending and all the questions. Like I said, reach out to me on, on, on um, social media, ask your questions, join the group, and then, yeah. Thank you.